let's install SQL Server and SQL Server Management Studio. Go to Google and then you'll search for SQL Server downloads and hit enter. Pick the first link from Microsoft saying SQL Server downloads. Scroll a little bit down here to developer download now and go click it. That will download the executable. You will open it. Here you will select the basic installation. You will say accept, install, and let's fast forward. A few moments later. SQL Server is now installed. While SQL Server is a database management system from Microsoft, SQL Server Management Studio is a software tool also from Microsoft that gives you a graphical interface on top of SQL Server. We can install it by clicking Install SSMS, SQL Server Management Studio. Here you scroll a little bit down under Download SSMS. Click this. That will download another executable. Once that has download, you again click to open that file and that will start the installation for SQL Server Management Studio. Click install and we will fast forward once more. A few moments later. That's it. Everything is installed. I can click close here. I can close the browser. And I can click close on the SQL Server installation. To use SQL Server and SQL Server Management Studio, I can go down to my start menu. First, we will search for SQL Server 2022 Configuration Manager. I can click to open it. If I go up to SQL Server Services, I can see that SQL Server is running right here. That's fine. Let's close it. Again, to open up SQL Server Management Studio, I again click on the start menu. Now I search for SQL Server Management Studio 20. Click to open it. That will open up SSMS SQL Server Management Studio. We now need to connect to the SQL Server, which is the database. Here, the default is Windows Authentication. I can change that to, for example, Enter ID, but I will stay in Windows Auth. Go down here and trust the server certificate and click Connect. Now we are connected. To create a new database, I can either go up to Databases here. I can right click and say New Database. I can also go up to New Query here. And let's do a query. We can say create database. And then we can give our database a name. That could be my burger bar DB. And we end with a semicolon. To execute this command, I click execute. And you will see that our command has been completed successfully. If I go over to the object explorer again, I can hit refresh. And if I open this database, I can do that by double clicking. I can now see I have a database called my burger bar DB. To switch the context to the newly created database, I can go over to query. Let's make a new line by clicking enter. And here I can say use. And then I can say my burger bar DB and end with a semicolon. If I only want to use this and not create a database, we have already created a database, then I highlight this and click execute. Then I have switched the context to this database. Let's fill data into our database. Today we have a burger bar and in our burger bar employees takes orders. We will create two tables, one table that hold an employee and another table that hold the orders. The table is a structured set of data in a database. Let's fill our database with data. I go up to queries, hit enter. First, I want to create a table called employees like this. 
And then I have a parenthesis. Now I will fill in some parameters. A table in a database comes with rows and columns where each row represents a record in that table. So I want an employee ID. So here I simply just type employee ID. And that needs to be an integer that will be a whole number one, two, and so forth. I also want it to be a primary key. Employee is a primary key since each value in the column must be unique and cannot be null. It uniquely identify each row in the table. So there will only be one employee per employee. We will, cannot have two employees with the same employee ID number. And then I want to say identity parentheses one comma one parentheses end and I will have a comma. Now we can finish this row here in the query. So the identity that will be an auto increment feature, it starts the employee ID at one and we will have increments of one for each new row we add to the table. So each time we have a new employee, we will add one to the previous employee ID and give the new employee that employee ID. Then I will hit enter. Let's also store the first name of that employee. Here I will say nvar char parentheses 50 parentheses end not null. What's going on here is that this column stores the employee's name nvar char 50. It holds up to 50 characters of Unicode text that could be letters, numbers, and symbols. We are saying not null because it must have a first name, otherwise we cannot use it. Then we could of course store last name, address, social security number and much more. But for this example, we will end with this. So I will hit enter. Then I will have a parenthesis end and a semicolon to stop it. So here I will mark this create table. I will hit execute. And if I go over to my burger backend in the object explorer, I can hit refresh. If I open up this, I can double click the tables and now we have an employees table. Let's also create an orders table. To create an orders table, I go to queries and hit enter. Here I want to say create table. Let's call this one orders. And I will have a parenthesis start again, and I'll hit enter. What do I want in that table? We want a unique identifier again, which will auto increment. That will be a unique ID for each order in our burger bar. Let's call this one order ID. Again, it will be of the type int, which stands for integer. It will be a primary key, which we already discussed. And we will also have the identity parentheses one comma one parentheses end. Then I also want a few other things. I want an a comma and then an enter. I want a foreign key to reference the employee who took this order. Here I will say employee ID like this. And then I want to say this should be of the type enter. So who handled this order and then a comma and an enter. Let's also store what the total order was. What is the amount? So here I say order total. This will be a decimal. We will have 10 digits and two of them must be the decimals. And this will also be a not null. We need to have something in it. Then I also want to enforce a relationship between orders and employees. So what I will do here is to have a comma. Let's write first and then explain the expression. So I will say constraint. And here I will say FK employee orders foreign 
key employee id like this i will say references employees employee id on delete set null then i also want to have an interclick i will have a parenthesis end and a semicolon so what is happening here? Well, here we enforce a relationship between orders and employees. In the foreign key parentheses employee ID, here we specified that employee ID in the orders table is a foreign key, which references to another table. In the references employees parentheses employee ID, here we matches the employee ID in the employees table. If an employee is deleted, then the employee ID in that table will be cleared. Let's go execute this query as well. So I will mark everything and then I'll hit execute. If I go over to the object explorer, again, refresh, we now have the two tables that we have created. Let's hire some employees. So I go over to my queries again, and here I will say insert into and then i want to say employees here i can see the autocomplete if i hit tap on my keyboard it simply just autocomplete so it knows that this table called employees here i will fill in first name again hit tap to autocomplete and the parentheses end then i hit enter i will say which which value will go into that hit enter here we only have one column so I could, for example, say John, do it in single quotation marks. Here we have a text and I have a comma, hit enter. Let's have two more employees. We will have Jane like this, a comma. And the last employee that will be Emily like this, single quotation mark, parentheses end and a semicolon. If I want to run this query again, I simply just mark it, hit execute. Down here you can see three rows affected. If I want to inspect those, or if I have other values in the employees table, then I can go over here, right click on it, select top thousand rows, and here you have our employees. Could also have made a query here. Then I can go back to my queries. Let's add some orders. And if we think about the orders here, we also specify an employee ID. So who took that order and what was the total amount? Again, I go to my queries, hit enter. Here I want to say insert into, and then I say I want to insert into the orders like this. And then I also want to say which columns that will be the employee ID and order total like this in that order. And then I hit enter. Again, I say values just as we did before with the employees, hit enter. Here we have two columns for each row, which were a record. So I say parentheses. First of all, here, John, that will be employee ID. He handled an order of the total 25.50 like this parentheses end and a comma. Then we hit enter. Then we had another order which were handled by employee ID two, which were J. That will be 1575, for example, parentheses end and a comma. Then John handled another order. And since in the orders, if I look up here, the employee ID is not a unique primary key up here. So can find be the same employee who took another order. That could be one, 45.0, and a parenthesis end. Let's pick the last order. I can say comma, and then I can say three, comma, 30, 20, like this. And I also need a semicolon to end with. I can comment my queries. So for example, if I go up here, I can have a space and then I can have two hyphens that could be, I can say, 
another order handled by John, for example, then this comment will be ignored when I run my query. So this is just to make it easily understandable for myself. Let's execute that as well. Now we can see four rows is affected. And if I go into the orders, then I can right click again, select top thousand rows. And here we have it. So now we have four orders. We have one, two, three, four, the order ID. We can see the employee ID and the order total. Let's do a query where we combined the two tables. I could query from here as well. But since we had all our queries out here, let's do it here as well. So here I can say select. And now we are using an alias for the orders we will create it in a bit. So I'll say O. And then I'll say dot, I will say order ID. So I want the order ID from orders. And then I will also create an alias for the employees in two seconds. From here, I want the first name, this will be the I, I want the order ID and I want the first name. And then I want from the orders, I also want the order total like this. Then I hit a new line, then I say from where do I want this to be taken from? I want to be taken uh, this to be taken from orders. And I create an alias, which is the O. Now you can see the two arrows from up here disappeared. I still haven't created this alias. So but we will create it in two seconds, then I will say join. Now a join combines combines rows from two or more tables. So here I say join employees. And now I say, use the E as an alias. And then I want to say on. And I want to say, O from the orders ID. And here I want to say the employee ID from the orders equals the employee ID from the employees like this. And then I can have a semicolon to end it. Let's see what this query look like. So I mark it, hit execute. And here we have our joint tables. Well done. Now you should go watch this video where I teach you how to automate SQL databases with the free Microsoft tool, Power Automate Desktop.